Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. So today we are going to study about rotation of jaws during growth. So during growth we find two types of rotation. One is the internal rotation and the other one is the external rotation. Okay. So internal as the name suggests it is related to changes occurring inside that is within the core of the bone. Okay. And external these are produced by changes that occur on the surface. So, internal occurs in the core and external occurs on the surface. Now, what happens is the internal rotation, okay, both these rotations are occurring, alright. So, the internal rotation that occurs, it is not visible because it is masked by the external rotation that is going on, okay. So, the external rotation, it is kind of lessening the impact of the internal rotation means we though the internal rotation is occurring we are not able to visually appreciate it so how did we come to know that rotation actually occurs so there were few people jork and co-workers i hope i'm taking his name correctly so jork and co-workers they did longitudinal studies of growth using metallic implants so they used metallic metallic implants to study the growth so basically you place the implants in the bone and study the changes that occur in the course of years now let's see some terminologies before we proceed okay so if the posterior growth is greater than anterior that is called as forward rotation if the anterior growth is greater than posterior we call it the backward rotation rotation of mandibular core relative to the cranial base is called the total rotation and rotation of the mandibular plane relative to the cranial base it is called as matrix rotation now rotation of the mandibular plane relative to the core of mandible it is called as intra matrix rotation so these are the terms we should be knowing before we proceed all right now coming back to rotation so this was our mandible okay so first we'll study about the mandible mandible okay so we are going to divide mandible into two parts one is the core and the other one is the functional process functional process okay so core is the bone that surrounds the inferior alveolar nerve we all know that inferior alveolar nerve is going somewhere here so this this core it is it is the bone that surrounds the inferior alveolar nerve so this portion is the core so it will also go inside like this all right and the functional process as the name says they do some function for example the alveolar process here alveolar process we all know that it is involved in mastication then we have the condylar process that uh, helps articulate the mandible to the cranium and then we have some muscular process for example the temporalis muscle is attaching here the masseter is attaching here so these would be the functional process so in the functional process we have the alveolar process alveolar process muscular process mus muscular process oops and then we have the condylar process condylar process now let's place implant in the core of the mandible so we are going to place an implant in the core of the mandible and then what we'll observe is that the mandible rotates in such a way that the mandibular plane angle will decrease. So our mandibular plane angle, mandibular plane angle will decrease. Angle will decrease. Okay. That is, it will be up anteriorly and down posteriorly. So this can happen. This can happen by two ways. Let's see how. So these are the two diagrams that will help us visualize. So the first one is by rotation occurring in the condyle. So this is our condyle. This is a line diagram for the condyle. So rotation occurring within the condyle. So the condyle will rotate and will cause this. For example, the condyle rotates upward. So the diagram will be something like this. And if it goes downward, it will be something like this. Okay. And the other way could be rotation occurring within the body of mandible means the condyle has nothing to do now the rotation is just occurring within the body of the mandible so let's come back to this diagram so here 
if there is more growth posteriorly than anteriorly the rotation is said to be forward and it is said to be forward and given a negative angle given a negative negative sign okay and rotation is considered backward and given a positive sign backward and given a positive sign if the anterior dimensions are increasing in length more than the posterior so it will bring the chin downward and backward okay it will bring the chin downward and backward all right so here in this figure we can see superimposition on implants for an individual with a normal growth pattern okay so um this is from the age 4 to 20 years so for this patient there was a 19 degree internal rotation but there was only 3 degree change in the mandible plane angle okay only 3 degree change in the mandible plane angle so the reason that the internal rotation is not expressed in the jaw orientation is of course the surface change that means the external rotation it tends to compensate it okay so this would mean that the posterior part of the lower border of the mandible it must be an area of resorption okay so we are seeing that this was the this in the black was at the age of 4 years okay so during the course of time the posterior portion is resorbing because you can see in 10 years it is resorbing and in 20 years it resorb more so the posterior portion of the mandible it must be an area of resorption and anteriorly you can see that this is kind of unchanged or you can kind of find certain apposition here certain slight amount of apposition here now let's come to the maxilla so here is a maxilla it's less easy to divide the maxilla into a core of bone and series of functional process we do have an alveolar process here but there are no areas of muscle attachment that are analogous to the mandible all right here we'll find the bones surrounding the air passages and they serve the function of respiration but their form function relationship is kind of poorly understood so what we'll do we'll place the implant in the maxillary alveolar process for example we place the implant here so we'll observe here a core of maxilla that undergoes a small and variable degree of rotation forward and backward okay now at the same time when this internal rotation is going on we find changes in the palate as well so while this process is occurring we are finding changes in the palate as well palate okay so remodeling is going on here so for most patients the external rotation is opposite in direction and equal in magnitude to internal rotation so here the external external is just opposite to the opposite in direction and equal in magnitude to the internal internal rotation so the net change in the jaw orientation is zero okay so it is zero the net change is zero greater or lesser degree of both external and internal rotation can occur altering the extent to which the external changes compensate the internal rotation so there could be variations in the jaw orientation so we'll see some rotational growth pattern one would be the short face short face and other one would be the long face long face so short face type means that they have short anterior lower facial height so i'm trying to draw something like this okay so this is kind of short face and then i'm drawing a long face okay so this is not a good drawing at all <laughs> all right so in short face they have excessive forward rotation of mandible because they have increase in the internal rotation their internal rotation is more internal rotation is more and the external compensation is decrease so the result is nearly horizontal palatal plane okay so they have a nearly horizontal palatal plane a low mandibular plane angle as well and a large gonian angle and usually these people have deep bite malocclusion and crowded incisors so deep bite malocclusion and crowded crowded incisors and the long face individuals they have excessive lower anterior facial height all right so these have excessive lower anterior facial height 
so in them the palatal plane rotates down posteriorly all right and the mandible show opposite backward rotation and there is increase in the mandibular plane angle so here we find there is increase in the mandibular plane angle all right and this occurs because of lack of normal forward internal rotation or even backward internal rotation all right and this internal rotation it is centered in the condyle so such patients have anterior open bite anterior open bite and mandibular deficiency because chin rotates back as well as down so so the chin will rotate back as well down back as well as down so they will have mandibular deficiency mandibular deficiency deficiency so hope this video was helpful if you like it please give a thumbs up thanks for watching allah hafiz